and welcome to EcoTalk, the part of the show where we meet the people working hard to conserve biodiversity. Now, in a previous episode, we travelled to Nyeti Peric, one of the biggest bat hibernation sites in Central Europe. Today, we're talking to Dr. Tomasz Kukurowicz, who's been working at Nyeti Peric for over 20 years. We're going to be talking to him about his research and Nyeti Peric itself. Hi, Tomasz. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. So tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get into bat research? It was very early in my life because I was a fourth-year student in biology in Wrocław University and I, I had to specialize in certain fields of, of zoology because mm -hmm. I always was thinking about being zoologist. So I, I started to search the literature and and find that virtually nothing was known about bats. It was in 80s, okay? So, so it was like a, like a big hole, you know, suckling, you know, suckling me, because I just wanted to, to know something more about these creatures. The uh, rest of the, of the mammals have been covered somehow. It was a certain amount of knowledge. But bats were just, you know, few information, not very precise. So I decided, yes, it's something really interesting and you can do more uh, studying these creatures. And it started. I, I made my MSc on fossil bats, okay, because it was nobody in Poland at that time who was who was uh, able to act as supervisor of, of uh, MSc on bats, right? So, uh, later on, I got more and more interested in these in this, uh, animals. I visited Nietoperec first time when doing my, uh, my MSc on fossil bats, right? But I just persuade my supervisor, the paleontologist, that it's necessary to find out where they live, how, how they look like. And so I, I went here, it was in early, early 80s, right? So it was just fantastic. So I, I, I've seen all these bats here and, and in this point I, I said, okay, it's something really for me. So what makes Nieta Peric so special? Okay, so Nietoperec uh, Bat Reserve and Nietoperec SAC or Natura 2000, it's, it's the eighth largest bat hibernation site in European Union. Um, and we are really lucky to have such a large hibernation site in Poland. So it is internationally important place because bats are migrating here from Germany, from eastern part of Germany, uh, traveling 260 kilometers in opposite direction, which is interesting because usually bats are in, um, in the autumn uh, are um, migrating uh, southwest, right? It is a direction where the climate is better and they can uh, winter is shorter, there are some insects available during the winter. So uh, it is usual migration direction. But for some Central European bat population, the migration is opposite. They are flying east to find Nietoperec and to hibernate there. So it is, it is very important for the Central European bat population of at least five species, I think. Uh, so starting from 1999, the winter bat censuses are organized in Netoparek to monitor the population number of, uh, of bat species hibernating there. There are 12 bat species uh, spending winter here. So the most numerous are five of them. So the most numerous now is uh, a greater mouse-eared bat, Myotis Myotis. Uh, the second numerous is Daubenton's bat, Myotis Daubentoni. The third is uh, Natterer's bat, Myotis Natterreri. The fourth is uh, Plecotus auritus, so brown long-eared bat. And the fifth is Barbastel. So you don't just carry out all this work by yourself, you've got a team behind you. 
Yes, you know, obviously I'm not working alone and I'm very lucky again to have the, the young Polish bath workers with me here. So I am supervising MSCs uh, on baths here. Uh, now we are doing swarming project with, with three MSC students. Um, so we would like to figure out this missing point in, in our, our bath study because, you know, hibernation is more or less uh, investigated and, and studied, but we know nothing about swarming, which is uh, bats mating period occurring in, in late summer and in, in early autumn. And so I was lucky to, to have good students and they are now catching bats second year in Nietoperek uh, in every two weeks. Uh, to find out which species are arriving earlier, if females are arriving earlier or later than males, right? What's the reproduction status of bats arriving to Nitoparek? Uh, so just to describe this phenomenon called called swarming, and also previously I had I had uh, two students who were doing the martens here in Nietoperek. And the, the good thing uh, is that all these projects were collaborative work with, with bat workers and uh, bat scientists from, from, uh, from abroad. So these first two projects were in collaboration with uh, Waterford Institute of Technology and with John Power, who is, who is doing a PhD in Ireland, in Waterford, uh, supervised by Peter Turner and Catherine O'Reilly, uh, about the predation of martens in Nietoperex. So my students were benefiting from, from this collaboration and vice versa, because I have been collecting materials to be analyzed genetically. Uh, in the direction of of finding what martens are doing underground in winter, they are foraging on bats. Okay, but how it works, we will we will know when John will finish his his uh, his PhD, which will be very soon. So the next uh, PhDs I, I mentioned before are in collaboration with uh, with British bat workers, with uh, Dr. Anita Glover. Uh, and many others, John Haddo, Henry Schofield from VWT, and uh, they are arriving here, helping us to, to catch the bats, and yes, it's it's very fruitful cooperation, I think. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today on EcoTalk. Thank you very, very much, Tomasz. Thank you very much for coming and and helping us in this project. And if you want to find out more about bats or Nieteperic, then just click right here. But in the meantime, catch you later.